The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Cynthia, we have a few. Right. I need to add under item I, which says consideration of a request from a teacher for a one-year unpaid leave of absence. We now have two such requests. And we need to add an executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations at the end of the meeting. Are there any other adjustments to the agenda? And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the March uh, 11th school board minutes and the March 27th school board minutes. Are there any changes? No. Seeing none, both of those minutes stand approved. The next item on the agenda is comments by the high school and the middle school reps, and then we have a special visitor, our Pond Cove principal for the day, but I think we'll let the high school and the middle school go first, okay? High school reps. <laughs> I didn't run from home. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, first of all, uh, on behalf of the students, uh, I'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to interview the uh, superintendents. <laughs> um, and I think uh, we were heard. And uh, I'd like to thank you on that. Um, Quarter just ended Friday, and the sports seasons have just started up, the spring sports seasons, and uh, I can tell you that the lacrosse team just got back from Massachusetts, or didn't just get back, but we had a fun time in Massachusetts, and it was a good learning experience to get on onto a field. Um, the play on Once Upon a Mattress is going on, and they casted for the pit band, and... Uh, have already, ca they're casting right now for the positions in the play. Uh, other than that, that's just about it. And hold on, one more thing is, we have students that are gonna call each of you up and uh, are willing to let you into, or bring you throughout the school and have you sit through classes with them. And uh, they'll be calling you up just to set up a schedule for a days that's good for you guys. And that's pretty much it. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Ann? I just make one comment. Um, I, I did sit in on all the superintendent yeah. interviews um, mm -hmm. with the students, and it was a great pleasure. They represented you all extremely well. Um, their opinions and their advice to us was in, incredibly um, articulate and adult, and it, it was a real pleasure. Right. It was a pleasure. And they were definitely heard. Yeah. <laughs> Are there other questions? I just wanted to say one of the superintendent candidates suggested that, um, or had a school system where there was a student rep on the school board, and it was something that we are certainly interested in pursu pursuing. And Mr. Defusco is going to try to talk to the students about doing that next year. It would be a non-voting member, yep. but someone who would get a board packet and actually be, you know, sitting up here and representing the students' point of view. All right. Yep. So hopefully there'll be some interest. In that. Yes, there definitely will be. And hopefully that would help communication yes. and other issues. We've actually talked about that in a couple of our meetings, too. Right. Just brought up the idea. Great. Well, we're very interested in pursuing that for next fall, so if we could okay. get that set up, that would be great. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for running all the way here. <laughs> uh, middle school rep. Uh, 
Um, the first thing is the fifth, sixth, seventh, um, the fifth, sixth, and seventh grades. They're starting to take the CATs this week, and um, also we've started the magazine drive, and it's nearly over. But it's really important that um, you still get um, orders in because each grade is going to take the money um, that they earn and put it to their own cost. For example, the eighth grade is going to take it with them to their freshman year, and the sixth grade class this year is going to use it to defray the cost of Chwanky. So it's really important that kids um, try to um, sell a lot. And the last day is Thursday, this Thursday. So if you can encourage kids um, to sell those, that'd be real great. And Friday, we're going to have a dance, but it's going to be held by the junior class this time because we decided to give it to them because they needed money for the prom. So we're going to help them out like that. And um, the drama club is holding a musical. Um, Wednesday at 7.30 and Thursday at 4 o'clock and 7.30 and it's called Give My Regards to Broadway and there's a pit band and everything. It's supposed to be real good. And um, Mrs. Cranshaw came to sp speak to the student council this morning and it was about the results of the developmental assets survey and that the 6th and ninth graders took. And um, we've decided that there's going to be a meeting for the students only though to discuss the results at 5 p.m. April 10th, which is this Thursday in the large conference room in the middle school, and also our spring squirts to start it up also. And that's about it. Great. Are there any questions? Could, could you give the dates to the um, musical again? Um, what, this Wednesday, which will be the 9th, I think, at 7.30, and Thursday the 10th at 4 o'clock and 7.30. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And now, Mr. Jack Malcolm. Principal for the day of Pond Cove School. <laughs> stand on a chair? Yeah. Let stand on a chair, Jack. Let him stand on a chair. This will do you. Can't see. <laughs> well, I'm Principal Jack Malcolm, and um, I want to report that I made a hat day for the elementary school. And the second and third graders are doing their CATs. Um, and I guess that's about it. How many students wore hats today? I don't know. Lots? Probably, yep. Lots. Probably most of them. Most of them. Did you make any other difficult decisions? Well, I got to choose if it's indoor or outdoor recess. And what did you choose? Outdoor. Why? Because it was a good day. Any other decisions you made? No. Any homework decisions for anyone? <laughs> um, well, uh, a fourth grade class, I gave no homework. So how did you spend your day? Did you Most Go ahead. Mostly just walking on the school, visiting all the classes. Do you think it's a hard job to be a principal? Yeah. <laughs> Did you send anyone to retention? No. I mean, not retention. <laughs> <laughs> Restitution. <laughs> Restitution. No. No? I heard about a threatening. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't be quiet during a test. Uh -huh. I appreciated getting the email message from you. I thought that was very good. Thank you. Any other questions for Principal Malcolm? Is there anything you could tell us about our current principal? He's doing a great job. We're never going to go, right? School and high school? The other I don't know. I didn't get to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Did you have fun? Yep. Good. It was worth your parents' money, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person who ever bought a principalship. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. That we know of. Right? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for doing such a good job today. Thank you, Jack. The next item on the agenda is uh, communications.
Carling? Um, on March 27th, Cynthia and I attended the PAS General Advisory Committee meeting. Um, essentially, um, they discussed the learning results for, for that school, the process that they use, uh, did a review a program review process, which I am going to be a part of, which is looking at, looking at programs and, and how effective they are versus also in relations to the number of students that are participating, et cetera. And I think it's a process that we could possibly use in our own evaluation of programs. So that was one of the reasons I really volunteered. And um, they did a new program update. Remember that one of the increases in our, in our cost for next year is a new computer technology, I mean, um, video technology program. Um, the, and the, the program is in place, and, and it was reviewed for us. Um, they did an update on the five-year plan to increase enrollment of girls and students making non-traditional program choices. This is an affirmative action kind of process that they're trying to make an effort. Um, and just to remind people that PAS graduation is on May 29th. They have two, one at 8.30 for the morning session and one at 11.30 for the afternoon session. And there were two PAS students from Cape Elizabeth who were involved in state <coughs> organizational competitions in health occupations, Erin Shaw from Cape Elizabeth and automotive student Joe Back from Cape Elizabeth. Great, thank you, Charlie. Uh, Keith? A couple of different communications. On March 22nd, several of our middle school and high school students attended uh, the Maine Music Educators Association District 1 and 2 Solo and, and Ensemble Festival at the USM campus at Gorham. I'd like to quickly read their names of the people that, uh, that played solos and ensembles there. From the middle school, uh, we have Sarah Yanticasol, uh, Katharina Hagman, Elizabeth Hamilton, Whitney Howe, Gloria White, and Harper Willis. Uh, representing our high school, uh, Julia Lipez, Erica Hecking, Aaron Sullivan, Kelly Reed, Leslie Potter, Katie Harris, and Mindy Christensen. And a uh, wind, woodwind quintet from the high school went also, and, and that included Melissa Fowler, Melissa Coffey, Emily Toulouse, Rachel Efron, and Heidi Carrier. Uh, I'd also just want to make mention and congratulate our high school fine arts department uh, for your fine arts nights. They were just uh, terrific, and I know there's other board members that certainly echo that. It was, it was a great two nights over there, and uh, congratulations to all. Great. Thank you, Keith. Um, any other communications? The next item is the superintendent's report. Cynthia? Right. Uh, high school principal search. We have 15 candidates who have completed the application process. And although that's not a large number, I am encouraged by the quality. We have a number of candidates that look like they would be potentially good principals for Cape Elizabeth. We will start our process next week with some initial interviews. And this is the, um, the committee as it currently stands. Moving on to the next topic, employee application blanks. In your packet, you had a copy of the current application blanks, which some of you may not have seen for a while. We're proposing changes in three areas. One, to accentuate a little bit more information on whether candidates have had experience in coaching or other co-curricular activities, such as drama or music or that type of thing, particularly for teacher candidates. So we'll update the application blank to accentuate that a little bit more. The second area that we're going to do is a little bit more on authorization for background checks. And this is an outgrowth of a seminar that Gail went to put on by the Maine School Board Association in the fall. And the third area is to gather information from candidates relative to their familiarity with technology. And we're going to develop three questions, basically, which ask people to tell us their level of expertise in the area of communications, particularly email, internet, and the internet tools, the area of productivity, are they able to word process, use database or spreadsheets, and the third area is professional knowledge in terms of using grading programs. So we'll have questions in three areas to get some feedback from the candidates. And at some point, 
Uh, we may want to do some type of assessment of candidates or certainly of new hires so that we'll know what kind of training we need to do to be sure that all of our staff is up to date in terms of technology. So, Cynthia, you are adding those things to the application. Unless someone here objects to it. Right. Oh, that's good. Could, could I just make a suggestion mm -hmm. about the coaching position right. one? Since we're um, now going to be having head coaches doing supervision, mm -hmm. I think we should ask them a question about their experience as supervisors. Okay. I mean, we have, you know, their educational things as they relate specifically mm -hmm. to coaching, but not in supervising Fine. others. Any other comments for Cynthia on the applications? And I am looking for a volunteer to serve on an advisory board for the school volunteer program with Gail Schmeda. One person, and we're looking at probably three meetings a year, one in the fall, one sometime mid-year, and one in the spring. First order of business being to look at business partnerships and to talk with folks from other districts that have up and running programs. So if a board member is willing to volunteer for that. Keith, and I said oh, I was okay. Keith and doing Beth. it this okay. spring. Okay, good. Too. Thanks. Are, are there going to be teachers on that? Yes, teachers, parents. Okay, because yeah. I, I was talking to a high school teacher the other night and who's actively trying to get good. Um, business partnerships mm -hmm. going. So. Yeah, I'd like at least one teacher from each school on it as well. Right. Cynthia, excuse me. Do we need to have a policy meeting on these applications or? I don't think so. No, I don't see that as a policy change. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything else, Cynthia? No, I'm all set. Thanks. Uh, next item is the principal's report, middle school. Well, my congratulations to Principal Jack Malcolm. I know I will not be in anywhere near as charming as he was um, informed, but um, I did happen to see him. I guess it really didn't register with him who I was, but we did see him walking through, and I met him in the cafeteria and cued him in that sometimes principals can ask for a cookie off the sheet, which I think he did. And I know Nancy St. John was with him at the time, and she really thanked me for that input um, to do that. But he seemed to be having a great day, and we do look forward to having him in the fifth grade next year with us. As Caitlin mentioned to you, um, we do have our musical coming up. And just to remind parents who might be listening that if students come to the evening performances, we do ask that their parents accompany them to those performances. Um, and that helps us with supervision. We will also have parent chaperones there. We have some volunteers, as well as both Mr. Jewett and I will be at those performances. But the students have been working hard, and I think it will be a fun evening. And hopefully, all of you can attend at least one of the performances. Um, they've been working hard, and I think it will be a delightful time. As I looked ahead on the calendar before our next um, board meeting, we actually have several events coming up. We will have our fifth and sixth grade band and chorus concert will be held on uh, May 8th at 7.30 in the high school gym. And then shortly after the May board meeting on May 15th, we have the 7th and 8th grade band and chorus performance. And those are our spring concerts, and we invite all of you to come. Those concerts are free. Um, the musical, there is a um, price to get into the musical, but the concerts are free. For the students, as Caitlin mentioned, we do have a dance this Friday for the 7th and 8th graders. But also, prior to the next board meeting, we have a social for the 5th and 6th graders. And that will be on May 9th from 7 to 9 at the high school. We will be holding um, next Tuesday, April 15th at 7 in the cafetorium. We'll be holding our meeting to kind of share with the parents our plan for um, the behavior issues in the middle school as we had input from our January 28th meeting, our February 13th meeting, and we've been doing some work to develop some things and have actually put them in place and we'll be sharing um, that information with parents. Also sharing with parents, we do have uh, committee that's working on improving our handbook for next year, especially around the areas of discipline. And Ann Swift Kayata, Rachel Stamieskin are serving on that for parents. Cheryl Higgins and Susan Dana are our teacher representatives. Um, and George Entwistle, and we hope Beth will be our representatives from the school board. And then Phil and I will also be there. That group will make other reports as we move along. The other part of Tuesday's agenda will be to break into some small groups and just brainstorm some other issues people would like the committee to look at or 
to um, gather information about. So we look forward to that. This was a meeting that was originally scheduled for April 1st and was rescheduled due to the snowstorm. Our progress reports go out on Friday, April 18th. So if someone doesn't receive one in their home, they should let us know and we'll take care of that. On, when we get back from April vacation on April 29th, we have a guest speaker coming sponsored by our student council. And he's a speaker they heard um, earlier this year at a conference for student council members. His name is Mike Weber. He's a motivational speaker for young people and he's going to speak particularly about attitude and positive, constructive, positive attitudes that young people should have. And there will be an assembly for 7th and 8th grade students, followed by an assembly for 5th and 6th grade students, and then Mr. Weber will be back that evening to do a presentation for parents. And that will be at 7 p.m. in the cafetorium. Later this evening, um, as was indicated, um, and one thing, we have two requests coming from the middle school. One of them is a request for a leave of absence, which I'm not sure what you will do, but that comes from Randy Perkins, who has worked with us for the last eight years, um, has done a lot of work with us with our computer program, as well as greatly changing the industrial technology program. Um, and he has written a, a letter to you that I know you just received today, and I realize that, and as he does realize that, but if we could have, the sooner we have action on it, if we need to advertise, will give us a chance to get out there to a wider pool of applicants. The other one is the resignation from the middle school. It does not come as a surprise to us. We knew this was coming. Um, however, um, it is from Deborah Cross, who is a member of our fifth grade team, has worked with us for 13 years, um, has been an outstanding member of that team, and a very strong teacher. Um, we will all miss Deb's input into the classroom, um, all of the many committees she's worked on with us, and the advice that she's given us over the years. But she is relocating with her family to Virginia, um, where she informs me they have a longer summer, a longer fall, a longer spring, and a much shorter winter. And Deb and her entire family are looking to that weather change. So we certainly wish them well, but we will miss Deb as a member of our school faculty. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And um, I just want to thank Deb for all of her work she's done, I know, on the reading committee and other committees all along. She will be missed by all of us. Uh, any other middle school questions? No. Uh, Rick, are you up next? Okay, Rick. Uh, good evening. On Saturday, two Cape Elizabeth High School students were recognized at the main College of Art. And this was a high school exhibit at the uh, Baxter Gallery in Portland. Sarah Brown received second prize, and it was a teapot sculpt sculpture which she completed, and Brad Rowell received honorable mention for photographic triptych. And please don't ask me what a triptych is, but he received the honorable mention. There are other CAPE students who were, whose work was selected for that exhibit, and I would like to rec recognize them. Terry Clark, Justin Shermer, Emily Hennessy, Millie McKean, Brian Carollo, Emily Calise, Sally Wyman, and Matt Allison. So all those students had uh, their exhibits, and it's done uh, statewide. It was uh, work represented throughout the state, not just the greater Portland high schools. I'd also like to congratulate Zach Hornby, and he has been selected as a Presidential Scholar semifinalist. We're in phase two now, and he is one of 10 students from Maine and one of 500 students nationwide who has been selected. The next phase, they will select two students from every state, so it goes from a pool of 500 to 100 um, to 150 boys and 50 girls nationwide. And he is in the process now. There are more writings that he needs to do in, in application process. We should know within another month or two how Zach has competed in the, in the uh, national uh, uh, contest. So we wish him luck. Also, um, report cards will hopefully be going home next Tuesday. Our grades closed last Thursday. Uh, to the parents, if you have not received one by next weekend, give us a call. We will not be sending them home in backpacks. So. Uh, please give us a call. We've also completed our preliminary scheduling for next year concerning our courses. Uh, we're in the process now of looking at our numbers, matching them up with teachers that, uh, from each of the departments, and we hope to have that in place with a preliminary schedule next week. Um, and hopefully the board has received, I sent forward our high school workshop day schedule from last Friday to give you an idea of what various departments we're working on. They're giving me the feedback now of some of the results of that, and I hope to share that with the board at the next meeting. Um, uh, the high school staff also uh, appreciated the opportunity to meet with the candidates, and, and Ann, thank you for spending time with them at the conclusion to kind of give and take some, some of their concerns, um, and they really appreciated that uh, over the course of those four days. 
Uh, Tuesday, April 29th, will be our last parent assistance team meeting for the year, and part of that will be some goal setting and, uh, for next year and the incoming principal. Uh, and lastly, I want to thank Mary McGuire. We have started the coordination of the, we've already started the bridging the gap process with eighth graders, and we've had, we've not upped the numbers to about, we have about 20 high school students who are going in groups of five to meet with the advisor advisee groups at the middle school. And we've already started, we've done that for two days now. So to Nancy, thank you, and also as Mary McGuire, who is as the advisee person uh, can, uh, coordinating that, that effort. So I hope it's, it'll be uh, beneficial for both the high school students and also for the uh, future high school students. That's it. Thanks, Questions? Rick. Ann? I'm on the bridging the gap thing. I did hear from my eighth grader who hates it when I mention him here, but I think that is a very positive thing um, to, ha to have the kids go to the eighth grade. I think they really hear what, yeah. they're, what they're saying. And one of the things we had done this year that we hadn't in the past, last year was just kind of assigning natural helpers to Gnau. This year we actually, Katie Lisa and I actually met with the students from the high school so that we were consistent in the message mm -hmm. that the students at the eighth grade are receiving right. uh, and to, how to address certain questions. So I think we, we've gotten better at that also. But I think, the, again, the number of seeing 20 different students instead of the same four or five every day was also helpful for the kids to maybe recognize someone from a friend or a neighborhood or, you know, uh, in that situation, a sport or athletic team that they can connect with. Right. So. And again, the, um, the the, you were setting up for fine arts and, and taking down from fine arts when the superintendent candidates were here, and they were uniformly extremely impressed. I mean, the, the show, the school just looked spectacular, and uh, they were really impressed with the yeah, town. The timing was heard. ideal. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Thank you. Rick reminded me of the, the work the high school students coming in. Some of that has come off from the work we've done with the eighth grade representatives from advisory. And they, those eighth grade students asked for the high school students to come a little bit earlier to talk about some issues, particularly harassment and other issues. But as they've worked with the high school students, the high school students have actually helped them problem solve several other things and come up with some other suggestions that this will be round one of their involvement with the current eighth grade. Then they have some suggestions that the two student groups together are working on um, to go for round two and three as we begin that transition to high school, but also really positive, and we thank the high school students for their help in being part of helping some of the eighth graders rediscover all the things that they can do that are positive. And um, we really thank them for that involvement and commitment to the future high school students. Thank Rick, you. Rick, you didn't mention this, and I'm sure you'll give a report at some point in time, but my understanding is that you have many students who are having great success in college admissions this year. That this particular 12th grade is exceptional. Well, this is awesome. <laughs> Sorry. This, this has been a year where many more colleges are looking at early, ha, had looked at early decision on rolling kinds of admission. So we're getting more, you know, more feedback more readily than, uh, than the April deadline. So, and I'll at some point share that with you too as we get closer to the uh, maximum numbers. Yes. Thank you, Rick. And um, Tom, are you going to? Do report even though your principal <laughs> for the day already did his. <laughs> yes. Good evening again. Um, a, a few more remarks about principal uh, for a day. I uh, want to express my gratitude to the Pond Cove and the Middle School Parents Association for the fundraising because Jack's day was part of that. And thank, for, thank you to all the people at Pond Cove, middle school and the high school who were good sports uh, to make Jack's day successful, I think. He did a lot more than what he told you. I mean, he met Sue Weatherby at 8 o'clock and was informed that he had to keep the cafeteria very clean for the day. So, and I want to reassure the staff, too, that uh, in the light of administrative turnover at Pond Cove, that principal for a day is not a management style we're really looking into. So, um, last month, on March 13th, about 10 parents, Cape Elizabeth parents, came to a Maine Ambassadors for Education workshop from 4 to 9 at 1226 Shore Road. I sent home some information about it in the Thursday notes, but I just wanted to reiterate that although there was a small turnout, it was quite successful. The people who came learned uh, about how schools work in general. They learned more about their schools. And the purpose of the workshop was to get people more involved, to help change things, and to help all the three schools improve. Uh, Jane Amaro and Jean Ginmarvin took time out of their very busy schedule. I think it was the day they passed the budget in Augusta to come down and field questions for a little while, too, so I really appreciate that. And I understand um, from the Parents Association at Bon Cove that the people who attended the workshop would like to do another one this spring. 
So congratulations to them. I know everybody's busy. I appreciate their involvement. The Science Committee is, is meeting with representatives of commercial publishers and suppliers of materials on the first day back from vacation. I'm more convinced than ever now that we're on the right track. The latest Ed Week, Educational Week, has the following headline. Surprise, analyses link curriculum and test scores. <laughs> we pay a lot of money to learn this. Um, basically, it says it's the curriculum, stupid. That's part of the article. We, although we don't lead the world in uh, math scores at eighth grade or in science scores in eighth grade, one of the researchers pointed out that we have the world's biggest textbooks. And it seems, taking a lesson from other countries, it might be a good idea to cover less and do it better. And this seems to be the track that this curriculum committee is on. The team leaders spent the day in Waterville as part of their last day with the team institute training we've been doing for the year. We have a, a more substantial job description with examples that we'll share with you eventually in printed form and share with the staff. In light of recent budget discussions, I think the timing was good about the roles and responsibilities of Pond Cove team leaders. We were able to really clearly define the housekeeping items to get those under control and start to talk about what makes team leaders important for curriculum development and for the kids at Pond Cove. Um, so I'm pleased, I think we're on the right track with that. And uh, we will invite you either to a team leader meeting, people who can come, or to a faculty meeting when we, when we share those results. The feedback from the group was having this time and your support to do it helped us focus more about our responsibilities to the kids at Pond Cove. And finally, um, you're all in Pond Cove shepherding superintendent candidates around. I'm sure you all noticed the uh, artwork up on the walls of Pond Cove. First of all, it's tape that's guaranteed not to deface anything. We've got special tape. But I wanted to thank Marie Hayes who and the parents who went through channels to do this. They checked with the fire department and the fire uh, regulations. And uh, almost overnight, it seems, um, Pond Cove Halls just blossomed with uh, masks and art. I don't think we had any triptychs, but we had just about everything else up there. It really looks good, and they worked hard on it. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Any questions? The halls really do look great. Okay. Excellent. Right. Sue Weatherby would like to report tonight. Oh, Sue? We've been receiving a lot of phone calls in regard to summer program and when will that information be out and when can they register. So I thought that this was an opportunity to remind the public that um, the capability brochure, which looks like this, and if you have a fifth through eighth grader, everyone should have received one in their home. Uh, they were mailed out on March the 27th and registration started yesterday. Um, also in this brochure for the first time is the middle school camp information as well as the registration um, card and um, we have started to take middle school camp registrations as of yesterday as well. Um, just a reminder to them that all of these programs have limited enrollment and if you wait too long you may be disappointed. Um, to my knowledge only one thing filled yesterday and that was the babysitting certification class but I know whitewater rafting is very close and Saka River canoe trip is very close. So this is just a reminder to all that um, this is going on now and things will be filling up quickly. So just a reminder, if you haven't received one, we have plenty at the community services office um, for board members who may not have a fifth through eighth grader um, to look at and um, there's many more available. Uh, just so you know, we also mailed them to any students in those age groups that do not attend the Cape Elizabeth schools but are residing in Cape Elizabeth so they have the opportunity to sign up as well. So that's capability camps. Um, the summer program brochure will be mailed out next Thursday. Um, we once again will utilize the lottery process for registration times. Those, um, the lottery picks may occur any time the week of April 28th. So April 28th through May 1, you may come in or call and we'll draw a lottery ticket for you and that will give you the time that you're to register for the summer program. We instituted it last summer, it went very well. There are no more lines and even those folks that draw an 8.30 time frame um, were really able to get their children into most of the program, sometimes having to make a second choice occasionally, but 
um, that is all going to occur. Um, we're getting many phone calls asking when the program is going to run. It is going to start on, on June 25th, which is midweek. Uh, so that first week will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The following week will be a four-day week um, prior to the 4th of July weekend. And then we'll run four weeks after that with day camp ending on August 1st. We will run extended camp for those wishing to partake and need daycare for an extra week. So we will be running through the 8th of August. Um, if you have any questions, don't feel free to give us a call. Um, but you should expect those brochures. Hopefully they won't get lost in the vacation mail, but they will be coming out next week. Um, I know we've been concerned about daycare numbers, and I thought I'd give you an update as to how many we have as a result of the kindergarten orientation night. Uh, we had 27 people enroll in the kindergarten program for the fall of 97. Um, up until this point, or up until May 1st, we have priority registration for next year for those people already enrolled in the program. And we have, to this point, taken in 67 more, which puts us at 94 registrations. We will be opening that up to the public as of May 1. So as of May 1, it will be first come, first serve in terms of signing up for the Community Services Daycare Program. So that's just an update so that you know where we stand with our numbers so that we can be looking into space issues and staffing issues for fall. What's your limit now for the after school? And right now our limit is we're licensed for up to 100 children a day, but given the space constraints, we have really lowered that to about 90 per day. Um, and that is <coughs> probably accommodating about 110 to 115 families because you don't have to come every day. You have to come a minimum of three days a week. So we're probably accommodating over 100 families. I know last year when we um, tallied all of the applications that came in over the summer, we were up around 140. And that's when we started to maintain a waiting list. Um, so right now we're at 94. Um, who knows what will happen once it's open to the public. And there are still people in daycare that haven't come forward and done their registration, sometimes because they just haven't thought of it yet. But as of May 1, we will be opening it up to everyone. And letters will be going home through the school saying that now is the time you may register for extended day next year. Great. One other project that we're involved in um, just recently, at the request of the town council, the community services staff, and our advisory commission, um, has established a Recreation Facilities Use Committee. And the charge of this committee is, is to conduct an inventory and analysis of the recreational resources in Cape Elizabeth. These resources are defined as spaces for recreation, both active and passive, and are located both inside and outdoors. The project will include a comprehensive assessment of resources and the conditions, the level of use through data collecting, as well as projections for future growth and trends. And um, we started working on this a couple of weeks ago. Our advisory commission, um, plus some former advisory commission people that have been in the town a while and have had an interest in doing this sort of thing. So we've actually recruited a couple of extra people to help us. And the, one of the things that we are doing is, is we're taking the bursts over a 10-year period and projecting what those numbers are going to look like so that we can look ahead and project what kind of facilities we need given the numbers of students. Um, when we started looking at those today, it was amazing because your birth rate uh, in a particular year, let's say 1989, might have been um, 91. Uh, babies. But by the time those kids enrolled in kindergarten, those numbers were in, inflated anywhere from 30 to 46 percent. So that was a fairly significant statistic for us. And now we're going back over the years to see if we can find a mean average. But the other thing that we need to consider, not only the birth rate, but the baby boomer generation, which is now going to be in their 50s and 60s, and how is that going to impact um, the facilities in the town. So those are some of the things that we'll be looking at, and I'm just mentioning it by way of giving you that information that we'll be looking at not only fields and tennis courts, but gymnasiums and, and as well as passive recreation areas to see what the needs are for the future. Great. Any questions?
Sounds great. So I assume you're talking to some of the people who had done works on trying to get fields built and stuff before, because I think they have quite a bit of data already. I know they do. In fact, we've got a couple people. Um, one of the things we hope to do is um, not only conduct surveys, but to go to the user groups and, and get the data that they have on statistical information, such as Little League, such as Travel Soccer, such as the Cape Elizabeth Tennis Association. And um, you know, we may need more than fields. Right, exactly. And so sure we we're do. trying to look at the whole picture, but hopefully um, we have through the summer to complete this report, and I will be sharing it with you at that time. Do, do you want to say anything about the, uh, the fence at the middle school at this point, the baseball field? I'd be happy to. Um, we have ordered um, what you call a baseball fence. Um, the order went in at least two weeks ago. It would be three to five weeks before it actually arrived. We got 600 feet of fence, and um, it is the type of fence that if someone falls into it, it goes down but springs back up. Um, this fence will begin just about um, where the bench is that the team sit on. It will go all around the, out, the entire outfield and then down the first baseline so that all of the barriers um, that are out there, such as the playground, such as the propane tank, such as the electrical boxes will protect these, will be protected, or the kids will be protected from them, I should say. Um, we also are going to remove the guardrail and have it relocated at Fort Williams, and public works should be getting started on that any day. We also have ordered two 15-foot um, benches um, that will be used as player benches. They will be portable so that we can also use them um, for soccer or other sports. Um, but those things, they're in progress, and um, actually we expect them most any time. And that fence will be taken up, uh, t put up and taken down uh, prior to and after the baseball season. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Sue. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you, Sue. Next item is the committee reports, Finance Committee. Charlie? Uh, we had a short Finance Committee meeting that met at 6.30 in the Chamber Conference Room, and then we um, went into executive session. We did couple, cover a couple of areas. Uh, we covered a proposal for purchase of five used Macintoshes to offset what we would be buying through a lease next year. These are um, top of the line and actually have higher specifications than what we have set for our computer purchases. So we will be buying five of those at $3,500 versus $10,000, which would yield about a $1,500 per year lease. So there's a substantial savings there. And uh, the business manager reviewed with us a change in maintenance positions, and um, we thank him for those efforts. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Uh, policy subcommittee, Gail. Yes, we had our last meeting on March 13th. Uh, there were only three of us at that meeting. We uh, are presenting no policies this evening for a second reading and are presenting one policy and a guideline on student uh, school harassment, excuse me, and that will be for a first reading this evening. Dr. Moles had called the MSMA and we've gotten some copies of the um, current language on harassment policies for schools, and uh, we are proposing that we accept th those policies with the new language to replace the policy we now have in our manual. And this is a broader policy that um, covers harassment student to student, adult to student, and adult to adult. Um, we are hoping that we will have passed this policy uh, before the middle school, Pond Cove, and high school handbooks go to print so that there will be consistent language in all the handbooks, K-12, um, regarding this matter. Scott Poulin was asked to help us uh, write some guidelines for the system as how we would receive gifts, and he and I are still working on that. And the background checks, criminal background checks on the um, all applications for all employees was discussed, and Dr. Moles presented that earlier this evening. To date, we have no meeting set for April on the policy board. Any questions? Thank you, Gail. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Superintendent Search Committee. Anne? 
as we've already said several times tonight, we did have four finalists come and visit the school each for a full day, and they were in the schools in central office and uh, spent time with the board. Um, and other than that, I have no further report at this time. Thank you, Ann. Uh, next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Uh, the proposed fiscal year 97-98 budget discussion and action. Charlie, you want to? Uh, you have before you a, um, a nicely illustrated and put together budget. Um, we met on Thursday, I can't remember the date, for our last budget hearing. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. March 1st and March 7th, was it? No, no, it was like in the 20 20 oh, 27. 27? 27. Yep. Okay. Um, and what is before us this evening is a consensus of the board members present. Um, I guess this, you want me to no. put forth a. We have the lump sum amount? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I move that we um, move on to the town council acceptance of a budget for the academic year 97-98 in the amount of $12,162,245. I Is there a second? Second. Keith, thank you. Any discussion? I just want to thank Scott for all of his hard work. This is a wonderful finished product. You did a great job with the backup materials and leading us through it. And thank you, the principals, for all the work they did. And um, it, it is a difficult process, and it was very well done. Um, any discussion on the budget? Charlie? I would like to just thank everybody's participation, and I would also like to thank those people who did come out to, to listen and ask questions. I think it's probably one of the higher participations that we've had in a long time. Um, I know it is a budget that, that doesn't meet everybody's wishes, but I feel it is a budget that will, will meet the needs of our children and will give our new superintendent, whoever that person is, something to work with and to work on. Any more discussion? Anne? <clears throat> I, too, would like to thank um, Scott in particular for every year the budget's gotten clearer and clearer and easier to understand. And Cynthia also did a lot of work and gave us some really good feedback on budget items. Um, I'm, I'm going to vote my personal conscience tonight on this budget. I'm not going to vote for this budget because I really feel after six years um, on this board that from year to year we keep putting off hard decisions in terms of some of the basic restructuring I think that we need to do. So I'm just going to do this personally. I don't think there's anything horrible in here. I'm, um, you know, I, I'm glad that we've kept class sizes low. We have money in there for textbooks and technology and the maintenance plans. But I think we, as, as a board and as a system, keep avoiding make, making some of the hard decisions in terms of how better to structure our schools so they can be more responsive to our kids and responsive to the taxpayers. Um, so, regretfully, I won't. Any other discussion, Charlie? I would just want to make the, the public aware that this, this represents a 3.06% increase in spending. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. All those opposed? One. Five, one. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for leading us through all the budget things, too. I would also like to thank the board chair <laughs> <laughs> for keeping things moving. Um, new business. The first item is the consideration of the superintendent's nomination of continuing contract teachers. Right. I wish to nominate the following teachers for continuing contract at Pond Cove School and Valenti, third grade. The middle school, Cheryl Higgins, who is seventh and eighth grade language arts and eighth grade social studies. And at the high school, Mary Hudson, speech language and ESL, Michael Efren, math, Barbara McDonald, reading, half time, Christine Newell, math, Tina Johnson, special education, and Richard Roethlisberger, art and photography. Is uh, 
there a motion? I move to accept the, the superintendent's recommendations for continuing contract 9798. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. I wish to recommend the following teachers to move to the second year probationary status. At the middle school, Cynthia Curry, seventh and eighth grade science, Joanne Lee, music, chorus, she's half time at the middle school and then two tenths at the high school, Karen Rand, special education and ESL. At the high school, Hannah Jones, English, Nancy Murphy, English, Francisco Ruiz, Spanish, which has been reduced to a 0.8 position, and Douglas Worthley, physical science. Charlie? I move acceptance of the superintendent's recommendation for second year probationary teacher contracts for the 97-98 school year. Is there a second? Second. Gail? Any discussion? Can I just have a question. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the, the point FTEs, mm -hmm. is, is that etched in stone if we approve this tonight, or no. is there a possibility no. of changing it? Yes. It's yes. just the this position, not, not the, issue, okay. Right. This is their current state. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Six zero. Cynthia, go ahead. Okay. Uh, spring. <coughs> Athletic positions, despite the fact at the top of the sheet, I just <laughs> noticed it says winter. It was winter probably when we wrote this, right? High school softball. J I'm sorry. JV softball, Jessica Radley. And assistant baseball, <coughs> Daryl Adams. At the middle school, seventh and eighth grade outdoor track, Aaron Balistreri. 7th and 8th grade lacrosse, Ben Bluen. 7th and 8th grade lacrosse, Jason McKeechee. And 7th and 8th grade tennis, William Kayata Jr. Is there a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations for the spring coaching positions. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? Just one question. Does that fill our roles or fill all of our coaching positions for middle school and high school? No. Not yet. Okay. We have uh, we have everything filled now, but we didn't have it filled in time to come to the board with those. We have a seventh seventh grade baseball that we just filled, and I believe that's that's all. Just the seventh grade baseball that we just filled the the beginning of the school year. Is that pers person um, coaching? Yes, he is. <laughs> When were you going to get us the information? Well, you know, we, you, won't, you won't accept it unless it's on the Tuesday before the week. So um, we have all the information, all the information and everything is in. Uh, I don't, Mary, have you received it yet from Keith? Okay. No. no. Um, See, we haven't seen it, so. Okay. I will make sure that you get that tomorrow morning, the information on, on that position. I am here. I'll come up for a second. <laughs> Do you, do you know the background of this person? Can you tell us? Is it someone who's coached for us before? No, he is not. He is not coached for us. Um, Scott Shea, who is the baseball coach and myself, interviewed him. He was a former player for Mr. Shea. Um, we were waiting. We, we interviewed three different people for the position, and we were waiting to hear from one person that we were very interested in. And um, it took almost a week for him to get back to us because he was looking at another job at Massabesic Junior High. He took the other job at Massabesic Junior High, so that put us a week behind. And so we had to come back to our second choice, who is Tony Jones. Tony Jones is a, at USM. He's a former player for, um, for Cape Elizabeth. For, he played um, baseball for us, soccer and basketball, probably three, four years ago. And he's at USM right now. Student at USM? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And the reason you haven't received the information, mainly because we just, I talked to him, I think Mr. Shea talked to him on Friday. Um, and Monday he came in and we talked on Monday to get him set up for the position, which began on Monday. So knowing that you needed the information on Tuesday, we didn't jump too quickly because Maybe we didn't jump quick enough. Rick, you knew but this person as a student? Rick? You knew this person as a student? You knew this person as a student? I recommend Tony. 
it's the board's pleasure. If he's, if he's coaching, I'm inclined to nominate him. Well, see, see this, this is something we've discussed before because I'm very concerned about the fact that he's not going to have, you know, because anyone that we hire after Tuesday, you know, when the packet goes out, um, we, we haven't been able to give them a contract. Now this person's going to be coaching for a month. Um, liabilities and things have always, always been a concern. Keith and I have discussed this. Um, and we need to, you know, maybe somehow, maybe in the athletic steering committee or something, sit down and come up with a probationary um, contract until the board can, can just, you know, go over this person's position. Um, we, we just really need to get these people oh, hired the day, oh, I mean, before they start no, working. We, we, we agree, and, and we know that that's been a stumbling point for, for, for quite a few years. But, uh, you know, when we don't have anyone apply and, you know, this one fell apart because of the person that we were pretty sure that we interviewed for the JV job at the high school. We were pretty sure that he was very interested, and he was. And then it took him, we, Scott called him three or four times, and it took him over a week to respond because he was waiting for Massabesic to give him the job or not, and, and, and he did receive that job at Massabesic. Scott, did you want to add something? Yeah, I've got to have that person in the business office tomorrow. Okay. I will, I will give him a call this evening. If, that, if, that, if, if, if we have not officially hired these people, they should not be coaching our kids yet. We need to postpone starting the season or whatever it takes, even if we we have a pretty good feeling mm -hmm. about them or whatever. We have just got to well, that, that's why, do this yeah. legally. Well, that, that's why I... But he, he hasn't even gone to see Scott, let alone, let alone us. So this well, is a well, problem. No, well, no, not a lot of coaches do go to see Scott. You know, they all come across on the board. But that's why I think that we've got to come up with a probationary um, or something f to, to carry that person over for that one, that one month maybe but between board meetings because we get caught you know so so close to the board meeting and if we can come up with some type of a contract that will tide that person over until the next board meeting yeah and i agree that we need to hire the person before that but you know when we get stuck and we don't have anyone apply and, and it comes back to the last second you know our hands are kind of tied um, and i agree with you yeah, i need to just say something Andy. Mm -hmm. All Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I need that person in the business office. Okay, because I, I just figured they always gave me the forms and I always send them in to you. Okay. That's all I Okay. Then, yeah. what, what is the board's pleasure? Do you wish me to nominate this person or do you want to wait? To I feel like the person needs to be nominated and hired by this board. Mm -hmm. Even though I disagree with that we didn't get it tonight, we should still do it tonight because otherwise we stop having this person coach. Okay. Do you think, can we maybe in the athletic steering committee or, or something come up with some type of a, a fallback if we don't get someone hired by that so we're not getting into this situation? Because, you know, if we had that little fallback, then I, I would feel very comfortable. That's one of the reasons I came tonight, to make sure that, you know, we weren't going to get caught up in this one. Um, and obviously we did, at least I, I can... We well, can it talk sounds about like he group. was hired Monday, and he was really hired Friday. Friday. He was hired fr Friday, and it really could have gotten in the board packet. It, there was some fall down there, but in general, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We do happen to usually meet more than once a month, and we are always happy to have a special little one okay. vote. Th that would that would be. I, I'll take the responsibility of that one because I always felt that Tuesday, the week we just voted on that, you know, that we need everything in that Tuesday. So I'll, I'll take, the, yeah. take the fall on this one. We, we do because need we it, did, but if we don't yeah, have it, we need it. Yeah, we hired him. We, we contacted him on Friday, and Monday is when, when the position began. And his, so, his name is Tony Jones. Tony Jones, Anthony Jones. Right, and he's, he's going to teach. teach he's going to be coaching 7th grade, grade baseball. 7th grade baseball. And I will have him bring a cup of coffee to Scott early in the morning. And a donut. And a donut. Just so long Dunkin' as Donuts or Uncle Andy's? <laughs> Just so long as he's a legal resident of this country at this point would be good. <laughs> I, be, I believe he, he is. He was in high school here for a few years, we trust. I, I, I believe he is. I hope. Good. Under duress, I'll nominate yeah. Tony Jones to be the seventh grade baseball coach. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Mayor, did you get a Wait vote a in the first? You didn't get a vote on the first one, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. No. 
Okay. Why don't I just add add I'll add him to my nomination right. so you can do all of them at once. Okay. Time. Is there a motion? We, we had already moved. I had the motion. motion. We had already moved. Had motion. You had the motion just in the so vote. No. It has to be you a had the motion, but it hadn't been. Sorry. Let's vote on an amended motion. Cynthia would like to amend her motion. To add Tony Jones. No. She can. Sorry. It's a whole she, new motion. She, she okay. I, I made that motion. So I will amend Thank my you. motion of uh, nominating the uh, superintendent's spring coaching position. You can't nominate, you though. Point. <laughs> I can't. You can't. No, only the superintendent can nominate. Uh, no, I said right. you're, uh, okay. you're nominating. Do you nominate. You don't make motions, though. She made the motion. You made the nomination. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> We're getting our roles. I'm adding Tony Jones for the seventh grade baseball coach. Have Is you that? nominated him? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? I think so. She moves nomination of the superintendents. Right. Is there a second? I think you had a second. Did I? Keith seconded the original motion. <laughs> I second this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so long ago you forgot. No, I'm sorry. Ian seconded it. You had a question about it. I'm sorry. Ian, are you seconding You started it with the question. Sure. <laughs> Anything to get this over with. All those in favor? 6-0. Six zero. Uh, you vote? Yes. Six I, zero. I do have a comment that um, we should have a policy that people don't start working for us if we haven't hired them. I agree. You know, I, I, I do believe that's probably the law and doesn't have to be a policy. Yeah. Right. If, if, I can, if I can say one, you know, what I've mentioned before is if, if, the, if the board, you know, there's a whole month in between or maybe there's a meeting in there somewhere and, and losing, they only have about a week and a half before the start of the season. So if there's some other way that we can, if this ever happens again, it happened a lot this year because a lot of people did not um, apply for a lot of positions. There, there was you know, last minute in, in probably four or five, you know, probably more than that um, this year. And if there's some way that we can come up with a way to legalize that person for three weeks until the board can vote on it, a temporary type Well, actually, thing. Andy, if the um, athletic administrator is a certified administrator, the, the names would just come to the board and we actually wouldn't have to approve them anymore. That person would hire. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. it may work itself out. Okay. But, but uh, you're missing, missing the yeah. basic point, and that is the person, whoever it is, has to go see Scott and fill out all the paperwork so yeah. that we're covered. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, if that's done and it comes to the board, uh, you know, different. later, it's a little different. Substitute teachers, probationary teachers, um, yeah. teacher contracts, when I was talking about that, it's, it's the same process. Yeah. Great. Because there's no guarantee they'll get paid if they haven't gone through that process first. No, no, I, I agree with that. I, and, and I know exactly what, what we're saying, and I think we've been through this quite a few times, and I think that this is, it's time for us to sit down and, and you know, get it out. And, and I believe if, if, we, if that athletic administrator is an administrator, then we will, that, do that. will fill itself in right there. So. Yeah. But we still have to do the Scott yep. too. Please send them to Scott. I will make sure he is there Please. right and early in the morning. Thank you. you Thank you, Andy. Uh, policy readings. Gail? Oh, I know. Sorry. Okay, I am presenting the policy ACAA School Pop Board Policy Harassment. Um, this will replace your ACAA, which is currently in your policy manual right now. It is um, updated language that makes it more uh, comprehensive of student, student, adult to adult, student to adult, uh, sexual, ethical, racial, offensive, threats, comments, physical overtures, rude gestures, and any type of pressure to engage in any kind of um, sexual activity. And then it goes on and describes all of those. And this is for first reading. But we also have and my guidelines. All right, G B E B B. Yes, and G B E B B employees prohibited employee sexual contact, which prohibits employees from being involved with any student K twelve in our school, regardless of the school's age, student's age. In any school. In any school. In any school, regardless of the student's age. So those two are for first readings. Questions, comments for Gail to go back to the policy? If you have any, please let me know um, during the month. 
So that is all of them, because the guidelines the are The guidelines are included, and the forms, um, the harassment complaint form and the witness disclosure form are included for you to um, look at also, and they are the exact copies that the MSMA sent. Great. Recommended. Thank you. Any comments for Gail? Thank you. Next item is the consideration of the adoption of the LAU plan. That's the Lau plan. <laughs> In this case, it's the Lau plan. Every district is required to have a plan on file for the education of their limited English proficiency students, and we discovered that there was not one in place here, although you were, in fact, educating those students. So this just puts you in compliance. And this falls under Claire's domain, if you have any comments or questions. But it's basically a procedural issue, that we are, in fact, doing this at this point in time. Anne? I just had a question. The last page says policy. Um, limited English proficient students. Is that a policy that we are actually supposed to be? It's really a federal policy is what it is. Claire, okay, is so that's not we something have we have to. Book? She's asking if you should. If all the state says is that you have to have a, a plan and a policy in place that says you are going to educate students that come in that have. But is that supposed to be a school board level policy that we have in our book with, with maybe this as you know, the backup material? They said that you have to adopt that type of policy, yes. Okay, so, so this needs to go to the policy So would you take committee? this as the first reading, perhaps? And then, because it basically is what is in place at this point in time, and as recommended yeah. by the state. That's fine. And then come bring it back next time for the second reading, if everyone's. And we just need to get the letters and things at the top and the policy, and this would become the administrative guideline. Right. Yes. Okay. said that. Any other questions for Claire? Thank you. We'll send that to the policy committee and come back for a second reading. Um, the next item is the consideration of a request from a teacher for a one-day unpaid leave of absence. Yes. Cynthia? Michael Efren is requesting a one-day of unpaid leave. He has used his two personal days, and so that's why he needs to come to the board, and I recommend that you approve this. He's been using his personal days to take his daughter to visit colleges, which apparently Rick has been successful trips, right? Very successful trips. Any discussion? Is there a motion? Keith? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendation. Second? I second it. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. The next item is the report from the Athletic Fee Committee. Is that That's Priscilla? Priscilla. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we met on March 26th here at 3.30. Um, Keith presented the list of the, all the sports that are offered, and um, it was the recommendation of the committee that we accept um, Keith's um, plan, uh, I guess the athletic leaves plan, which will increase plan time for the head coaches for the purpose of evaluating the sub varsity coaches. Um, the cost of this is about $2,000, which is offset by a savings of 4000 because several third teams that did not have anybody come out for them or not enough people to run a team. So um, it won't be any kind of increase. And the, the, um, evaluate, the increase for the purpose of evaluating the sub-varsity coaches was, came out of the athletic study, study committee. Any questions? Well, Anne? just clarification. We didn't actually eliminate teams. Are we talking about the sharing of the cost of those third teams? We're not talking about actual elimination of teams. We didn't eliminate any, no, as far as I know. No, we didn't eliminate any teams, but there are teams that um, don't exist any. I mean, some of those third teams are not there anymore. It's my understanding, right? I don't, think, I don't think that's right. I think that savings was from sharing the cost. No, I don't. Or I think it might have been general savings of coaches we had eliminated are, through the That's athletes. fine, but I just want to make it clear because we've had this misconception by the public that we've been cutting teams oh. and we have 
cut no teams. I, I, I um, think one of the things, we, we've eliminated three coaches um, through without programs. And the, the, right. the third teams, what we've done, we've, we've cut back on them where the boosters are going to help and, and carry the rest of the cost. Right, but that's, we didn't that's eliminate right. that's any correct. teams. Okay, I just wanted to. I think too, just, that's, we did actually, though, eliminate one third team in the middle school. I believe it was the spring soccer, no, the, no, pardon the, me, the fall, fall. the fall soccer. Team. Because, basically because we haven't we used it either. for yeah. Yeah. Um, right. several years. I just years. want to make it clear, we haven't cut anything right. that people are actually doing. <laughs> no, we have not cut any athletics. Right. It, it's just we've gotten letters saying, why are we cutting you know, these opportunities for kids and stuff? I just want to make it clear, we keep having this misconception. We haven't cut the programs. Thank you, Priscilla. You're welcome. Do we need to accept anything? This increase of hours? Okay. Yeah, it would, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Is there a motion? Priscilla, why don't you make a motion? I move that we accept the athletic speech committee's report. Is there a second? I second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Six, zero. Uh, next item is the 97-98 school calendar. And at two. Yeah, I and want to apologize for the, the purple one. Um, there's a circle missing on the 20th of January. The counting, the, the numbers are all correct. It's just that that day should be circled as a teacher workshop day. And the, then the blue one is your other. You have two, purple one and the blue one. The option that the committee is recommending at this point is to go to the blue copy, which is not the one you got in your packet. Um, the purple one is the traditional April and February vacations. And the blue one reflects going to a one-week March vacation, which is a major change. Um, but it is one that many school districts thought about doing this year, and then everybody backed down at the last minute. And uh, the, I, I wrote a little memo, and I can't find mine now. But the, the reasons, uh, if you look at the blue calendar, the changes are the no traditional February, April vacation weeks and a new spring vacation in March. The spring conference day was changed to a staff development day. This would be a real gain for staff development and parents would be informed that teachers would be available to conference any time after the fall conference or even before the fall conference that parents requested it, which they already do now, but it would become even more flexible that way. The fall conferences, um, there would still be one and a half days. They're uh, sandwiched around Veterans Day. And then there are four st additional staff development days, because one of those conference days in the fall is our fifth staff development day. August 28th, which is a traditional beginning of school day. January 2nd, which is sort of a sandwiched day in there. February 17th, which is right before the February long weekend and April 17th, which is right before the April. Wait, now the 17th of February is not circled. Well, you've got two, you've got a couple of different calendars. Um, I think on the blue, February 17th should be circled also. I haven't seen the blue. No, it's not. no it was. And what about the t January 20th that you asked? It's still is the that 20th of January. Yeah, we haven't waited from the Oh, it's January 20th, January 20th. sorry. So the February 17th is not a not, school day. Not, sorry. Uh, to, to be honest, I thought we had talked about doing it in February instead of January um, 20th. So that if we, if we went to the March. I thought we kept it the 20th because that was closer to the 2nd, which was the report, the recommendations that we got back from the staff development committee. Okay, well, I'm just going to re report right now that I've been getting phone calls from teachers that they don't like the January 2nd day because it breaks up the vacation that their kids are on, especially if they're, you know, in this district. Their kids are on vacation, they're not. And they had actually requested if we could move it to January 20th. And That's going to be true no matter when we do it, that they're going to work and their kids are going to be out of school, right? I know. I'm just, I'm, I promised I would Sorry. report the feedback and, and um, you know, see, see what happens with it. But I do think... You know, we do have some flexibility there if we, if we wanted to. We could always do the January 20th day and then move another staff development day, you know, to February right before the vacation or right before the March vacation if we do it then. 
This is to get some feedback. It's not to adopt the calendar for tonight. Um, and our fallback option is to go next year with the traditional February and April vacations and immediately look into adopting a following year calendar with a March vacation, getting it out to other school departments and would give parents plenty of notice for the change. And the say, say that again. If we want to stay with the traditional February and April vacations for one more year, we would recommend the calendar group that we immediately put together the following year's calendar and had it out there so parents would know immediately when the next spring vacation was and get it out to other school departments because a lot are interested in changing. And just so people know, the pros for changing or the reasons to change um, are to try to get as many quality school days for kids as possible. And our school year is short. We are always wishing we had more days. And there is a feeling that after June 1st, there's a real relaxation in academics in the classroom. And this way, kids would be get out, getting out earlier in June. And there's also a feeling that after uh, the Christmas holiday vacation, that there's a lot of broken up time. There's the Martin Luther King weekend. There's snow days. There's February break. Then we just get going again, and we have April break and these kind of broken up pieces. The reasons not to change are that it's what we've always done. Um, staff who have children in other school systems that might be staying with a different vacation schedule and any athletic tournament conflicts, but we felt that those kind of things could probably be worked out. So those were sort of the reasons to float it. What's the makeup of the committee? You know, who's it, represented? Well, the... Um, Teachers Association was represented, um, the administrators were represented, the school board was represented, and um, Sue Weatherby was representing transportation and community services. And the superintendent. And the superintendent. Thank you. Um, so that's who's represented. Priscilla? Uh, going back to that January 2nd date, I do think that um, that is at the end of a long vacation, and if people had made plans, maybe having teachers having to come back for that one day um, might might really be hard. While, while of course, they children will be out if, if they are doing a workshop, but um, I could see moving that January second day. We had discussed it would be a student day if it was not a teacher day. I mean, there was really, and it wasn't a. You know, it wasn't a great student day, but that it, we don't usually extend the holiday vacation beyond the traditional holiday anyway, which is why uh, the, that holiday begins, again, the 24th. We're having school go right till the 24th. I, I'd certainly be willing to move that day if it would gain us being able to move the, vac the big vacations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, know. That, that's that's somewhat negotiable. I mean, I mean, I think there are a lot of places in the year we can have effective staff development. If it's not that day and people feel really strongly about it, and it enables us to, you know, maybe move on some of the bigger issues we have with the calendar, that would be great. So, what kind of calendar do people want to see back? I would like to get some feedback. Yeah, I, yeah. I need to I'd hear. I'd like to see this go home to parents that this is the proposed calendar, and I would like to see what the feedback is. I got feedback. I took it to a PCPA meeting, and it was about 50-50. Some people said, oh, great, you know, I've been waiting for this. And other people said, oh, no, this is, you know, it was sort of 50-50, which is probably what we'll get. Yeah, over the, over the years, that seems like how it's gone, basically. And I've been talking to people about it as they've called me, seeing the, uh, the one option. I, and I've said, by the way, we're really talking about a March vacation. Um, how do you feel about it? And, and most people actually are willing to consider it. Um, but I think we ought to, you know, it's floating out there now, and we'll see, we'll see what comes back. But I think it would be great if we could do it, just to have the more concentrated time not broken up by vacations. And, Ideally, I would love to see it sometime where we were able to add in another week of staff days that aren't kids, that aren't kids days. Sorry, I know that's really expensive, but if we just reallocated some of that money we've got in the budget, we could make it happen. Has anyone said anything about the December 22nd, 23rd? 
Those were offered as two possible staff development days, not student days. And I think it came back from the staff that they wow. really didn't like those as staff days. Knowing and the stresses of Christmas, I don't think it would be a good time. To I don't think it would be productive days. <laughs> productive I days. Well, I'm wondering how productive it's going to be for anyone. Um, so could we switch the 22nd, 23rd for the 18th and 19th of June and just have a full week that week of the 8th? And our snow days be the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th? We can look at it anyway, but traditionally we've always gone right to the, right to the holiday since. I, I got quite a lot of negative feedback about the long vacation. Maybe nobody else did. Being too long? At, at, at Being too long? In December, yeah. This past one? Yeah, I, I think people would rather have been out shopping. Uh, you know, than, than having their kids home. I don't know, but I did. I got a lot of comments about it. Hmm. I know they're supposed to only be caring about the education their kids are getting. But Charlie, we used to just that's not what we did. Just the blue one. Right. Right. I would send the blue one home. Just the blue one. Home. Or as, you, a, as a proposed. Maybe Tom, in your Thursday newsletter, you could say something about looking at a March vacation as opposed to a. Um, and Nancy, I don't know if you have another newsletter coming out or Rick. Um, I have another newsletter coming out, but I'm not. The timing might not but be I'm right. I'm not sure it would be in time, but we could maybe work something up to go home with the progress reports. That would be great. Mm -hmm. And that might even be, that's a good thing our kids can, no, can deliver that. We do have a way of making sure the progress reports get there, so we could do something with that. They go out the 18th. Oh, so. Tomorrow's the deadline for the Cape Courier, so it's not too late to get something in the Cape Courier since um, tomorrow is the It's a major change, yeah. and I really think that we yeah. should. Yeah. And I'm we have high school late. report cards going home on the 16th, yeah. yeah. It, you know, and if a little narrative went with it, too, that we're exploring changing it. Just a, a suggestion. Could we maybe get a generic narrative so that all the parents in the community are reading the same narrative? Probably a um, good idea. To, to go out and <laughs> attach with the calendar so. Not an edited we narrative? <laughs> <laughs> sort of generic, well edited, well crafted, and clear so that people will have that. Yeah. I'm sure Beth would like to take that on since you've already got your, your uh, template right here. I, I don't think I'd put it all in. Yeah. I will get something to Cynthia. Can you put it in the courier also? I'm not sure I can get it by tomorrow morning to Cynthia. I've got a busy morning. Through the day? I suspect Wynn is probably watching it. So. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure, I'm they're, sure they're they'd be willing nice to work okay. us. I'll try to put together a generic narrative that we can get to all three buildings and... Um, will you state that we will be voting on this in the May meeting with the, so that people will know the deadline? Or yes. are we not voting on it in the May meeting? No, we need to adopt yeah. a calendar in May. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. Great. Uh, next item is... Voted on May 6th. No, 13th. 2nd. May 13th. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the consideration of two requests for one-year unpaid leave of absences. Right. I have two requests. One is from Randy Perkins, as Nancy Hutton mentioned, who Randy is a middle school teacher. And I have a request from Jackie Petrillo, who is a special education teacher at Cape Elizabeth High School. I recommend both. Are there questions? Is there a motion? I'm trying to find my letters. I move the superintendent's um, request for two unpaid leaves of uh, Randy Perkins and Jacqueline Petrillo for the school year 97-98. Is there a second? Second. Chief. Questions, discussion? I, I, I wish we were um, taking these separately because I support one, don't support the other, but. Well, I'll amend my motion. Okay. I move. You, you want to amend your second? I would I'd agree to amend your okay. second, sure. For, I move first the one year request for an unpaid leave of absence for the 97 98 school year of Jacqueline Petrillo. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 
Six zero. Would you like to make another motion, Charlie? I move the request for a unpaid leave of absence for the 97-98 school year for Randall Perkins. Second. And discussion? I just want to say I just don't feel this is timely, getting it, getting it today, and I would have liked to have the opportunity to get a little more information. Any other comments, questions? I just want to say I have a hard time with a leave of absence so he can um, try out a job. It's, we're probably the only profession that you can get a leave of absence and then come back to us with a guaranteed job if things don't work out. And maybe that's not his intent, but um, he has an opportunity to manage a local business dealing with computers and customer service. Um, and it will certainly give him insight to the computer work he does here. But I feel like um, it's, uh, it's quite a luxury of the teaching profession. Any other comments? Questions? Yeah. I kind of have a hard time, too, with with what really he helps hopes to gain in what he's teaching in you know in, in his particular area i think I, I think it's because we got received it so late that it's hard that whatever questions we have that need to be answered nancy do you have a sense as to how difficult it might be to fill that position on a one-year basis how long has jackie been in there? actually i heard about this this morning so um I don't have a sense about that. I think this gives us an opportunity to look at our industrial technology program. There are many different ways and things you can do with that program. We can decide to stay with it as it is, um, talk about some other proposals. We have a couple of other faculty members who have some other thoughts of ways to integrate that program um, into things. It doesn't save you a position. I don't want to imply that. It just redefines um, that position. So I'm not sure how difficult it is. I do not know. Um, any, I haven't had a chance to even investigate that or, or think about what that is um, kind of thing to do that. So I really don't know. My question is, is this adding to his professional development in a real sense of working with kids and computers in the schools, or is this really a business opportunity for he himself? I, I think, to be honest with you, Beth, it's partially both, and I'm, I'm not sure what that is. I know that in talking with Randy today, um, I s just suggested to him that he do it as, as soon as possible, only because that would just simply help us go out there and see what is the pool of applicants. I have no idea. Um, I know that you know if, if you feel that you would like to have more information from him and you would want to table this until next time, I know that you know that that's also fine too. It really doesn't have impose on his plans. Um, it just maybe cuts down on what we could do for advertising. But advertising after the May meeting is, you know, it's not August. I mean, we have to to be realistic. And I really don't have any idea what the application pool will be. So I think that would be a that's that's a fine. Whatever is makes you feel more comfortable. I think is very doable. Priscilla. I, I can't vote for this because I really haven't had time to think about it. It's quite base, basic, you know, whether I agree with it or not, but we just got it, and I think that it has lots of ramifications, so I'm not ready to vote for it. Mm. Oh, Charlie, sorry. <clears throat> I'll withdraw my motion. Um, so we would like to table this to get further information? or. Yeah. Can I just ask, Beth, if, if maybe we could have a direction, I could go back to Randy and ask him what kind of further information you would like, um, and I know he would be glad to provide that well, for you. My question is, and this is just personally my mm -hmm. question, I feel like an unpaid leave, as um, Jackie Petrillo has asked for, is she's worked very hard for the system and she is a little burnt out and needs to have some time and mm -hmm. things. I don't think leave of absences are for people to try out another job or another field and come back to. So I want to know what he would be bringing back to the system and if he's committed to coming back and those kind of things. And this is really going to add to his professional development to do his job better. Sure. That would be my question. Sounds reasonable. I'd also Anne. like to know since, since you've said, well, maybe the direction of the, 
you know, of this position would change, I'd like to know what it, what it might look like, or would we be advocating? Yeah, and it, for it might not change. We really have not had any time to talk at all. I'd want to talk with people like Gary Lenoy, who works at the high school, sort of a feeder system, Jim Ray, some of those people, um, and also to have us have a chance to really look at the role this position plays. So, and we haven't had a chance to do that, but we could certainly do that by May. That would be great. So, tabled until May. Okay, thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions board members had or further information? <coughs> Thank you. Um, the next item is the consideration of a teacher resignation. Right. I have a resignation from Deborah Cross, and again, Nancy mentioned this in her report, and I recommend that you accept it with regret. Is there a motion? Charlie? I do move acceptance with regret, uh, Deborah Cross's uh, resignation. Is there a second? Second. Gail? Charlie? It was interesting when, when um, Nancy said that she'd been in our system 13 years. And 13 years ago, my daughter, who's a junior, was a, a, a member of the Children's Center, our now defunct Children's <laughs> Center. And, and Deb Cross, is, that's where she started. And a couple of years later, my son had her for, I believe, fifth grade. Because I think she came into our system as a fifth grade teacher. And both of those people from an early childhood uh, experience and from a fifth grade experience had wonderful, challenging years and exciting years. And she was a nurturing person. She took the time after school to, to help kids. She would have study groups with kids who needed help. And she did that on her own. And uh, she would be sorely missed. Anne? I'd also like to say between my two kids, they, they had Deb for a total of three years, and she's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. The kids love her. Her classroom is exciting. It's also, there are also very high expectations in her class. She can make any subject exciting, and, um, and she's great to work with also on committees, and um, I'm going to miss her a lot. It's a real loss. Priscilla? Well, I'll put in my two cents. My daughter currently has Deb Cross, and uh, it's been a great year for her. And I, too, will miss her, and I want to thank her personally as a parent.